Welcome to Digital Citizenship, Moving Beyond Literacy to Fluency. According to ISTE authors Mike Ribble and Marty Park, digital citizenship is defined as the ethics, concerns, and opportunities associated with living in a digitally engaged society. They describe nine essential elements of digital citizenship, access, commerce, communication and collaboration, etiquette, fluency, health and welfare, law, rights and responsibilities, and security and privacy. Our discussion today will focus on digital fluency, the process of understanding and applying technology and its use. Digital fluency includes the discussion of media literacy and the ability to discern good information from poor, and then applying the learned skills. The more fluent we are, the more likely we are to make good decisions online. To help guide us on this journey, ISTE, the International Society for Technology and Education, has included media fluency as part of its standards for education. ISTE calls upon all of us to inspire students to positively contribute to and responsibly participate in the digital world, and to establish a learning culture that promotes curiosity and critical examination of online resources and fosters digital literacy and media fluency. Being literate is having the ability, but being fluent means having or showing mastery of a subject or skill, effortless, smooth and flowing, capable of moving with ease and grace. Digital fluency goes beyond knowing how to use technology tools. When we are digitally fluent, we are naturally, unconsciously, and consistently applying those skills whenever we interact with the world through technology. The most talked about component of digital fluency is the idea of media literacy, the ability to discern credible information from fake news. Yet the term fake news itself is an oversimplification of a carefully crafted attempt to influence opinion using a variety of strategies. Instead of saying fake news, be specific. Do you mean propaganda, triggering emotional responses or fear to advance a political agenda? Disinformation, false or misleading information that is spread deliberately to deceive. Conspiracy theory, rejecting the standard explanation for an event and instead crediting a covert group with carrying out a secret plot. Or clickbait, an advertisement or something like a picture or a headline designed to make readers want to click on a hyperlink. It is often used when the link leads to content of dubious value or with financial incentives. These days, there's an entire industry that exists solely to influence consumers. Content invented in these fake news factories quickly goes viral. According to a study by MIT, fake news spreads six times faster than accurate news. And those falsehoods are 70% more likely to be retweeted. At the same time, articles and information from traditional news sources are routinely mislabeled fake news by those who see it as hostile towards their agenda or beliefs and want to discredit it. The ability to discern fake news from real information is becoming more important than ever. And studies continue to show that many of us are not as digitally fluent as we may think we are. A study from Stanford researchers evaluated students' ability to assess information sources and described the results as dismaying, bleak, and a threat to democracy. More than 80% believed that sponsored content was a real news story. Most high school students accepted photographs and images as presented without verifying them. They do not recognize bias or agenda, and they cannot identify the reliability of a source. Fake news is being passed on without thinking, and we really can't blame young people because we've never taught them otherwise. The prevalence of social media has only intensified the need to critically evaluate information. Social media pushes information in front of us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whether we ask for it or not. We need the skills to be able to discern good information from bad, whether it is in print 
on television, or online. To do that, we need the skills to understand who made the information and why, and then we need to evaluate how we came across that information. In 2020, Netflix produced The Social Dilemma, examining the influence of social media on our daily lives, explained by the people who actually built it. We need to understand that social media isn't a tool waiting to be used. It has its own goals and it has its own mean of pursuing them by using your psychology against you. It is only through strengthening our digital fluency skills that we can begin to counteract that effect. Because of these constant calls of fake news, we must teach our students to identify reliable journalism, which is held to a different standard than created content. Credible journalists follow professional standards, ensuring they use reliable sources, including documents and evidence. They minimize bias in their reporting. They provide transparency and accountability for their information. They can verify that information and provide context to support their reporting. Journalists deal in facts, not opinions. By contrast, content creation deals with marketing, whether it is marketing themselves, a product, or an idea. Think talk programs, commentators, or Instagram influencers. They are offering you something and hoping you'll buy whatever it is they're selling, whether it's a physical product, a theory, or even a personality. The information provided is generally based on opinion, not fact, so it is wise to proceed with caution and skepticism. Many content creators also knowingly write, post, and share disinformation. This is information they know is not grounded in fact. They count on their audiences to buy into it based on three types of bias, emotional reactions, implicit bias, and propaganda tactics. An emotional response triggers high levels of emotion, which then suppresses critical thought. Implicit bias or preconceived beliefs make the audience more inclined to naturally agree with the information presented as it confirms their own thoughts and ideas. While propaganda compounds bias with emotions like fear to advance a political agenda. Think of some of the stories or links you have shared recently. Knowing what you know now, which column would they fit under? Before you share, fact check. Consider the source. Do that extra Google. If it seems like it's designed to push your emotional buttons, it probably is. Being digitally fluent means that we naturally verify information before we accept or share it. With that in mind, we need to consider how and where we are getting our information. Are we actively looking for information to better inform ourselves? Or are we passively relying on notifications that are prompted by complex algorithms to tell us what it thinks is important? Are we using advanced search techniques and searching laterally to confirm information? Or are we falling prey to clickbait and wandering down a veritable rabbit hole that will only lead to more of the same? Are you relying on credible news sources or on unverified information you find on social media? Verifying information, especially information that you find online, is vital. As Roger McNamee stated, each person has their own reality with their own facts. Over time, you have the false sense that everyone agrees with you because everyone in your news feed sounds just like you. Once you're in that state, it turns out you're easily manipulated. The problem is, most of us do not even recognize that we are being manipulated. In 2018, Facebook reported that 64% of the people who joined extremist groups on Facebook did so because Facebook's own internal algorithms steered them towards those groups. It is important to be aware not only of where we are getting our information, but on how and why that information is being directed towards us. Don't get lost down the rabbit hole. We need to be informed and aware 
and apply our digital fluency skills to help us better navigate the online world. We need to actively learn and apply our digital fluency skills. When we find information online, we need to critically evaluate the quality of that information. We can start by asking, did I deliberately look for this? or was it suggested to me based on an algorithm? Then we can assess the relevancy, accuracy, bias, and reliability of that information. Is it relevant? Does it have the information you need? Did you find the information using advanced search techniques? Or is it clickbait, designed to catch your attention and lead you astray from your original purpose? Is it accurate? When was the information on the website updated? Can you search laterally to verify the information with alternate and reputable sources? Have you considered that this new information you find may actually be more accurate than your original thinking? This is a hard concept for many people because we usually prefer information that confirms, not challenges, our thoughts and opinions. Is the creator biased? What is the purpose of the information on the website? What is the motivation for putting this information online? Is it personal, professional, political, or for profit? Is it informative or designed to sell you a product or an idea? Does it present only one side of the issue? And is there anyone who might be hurt or offended by the information? If so, this is probably not balanced reporting. Finally, we must ask, is the source reliable? Is the author or publishing body trustworthy? Does it have a reputation for integrity? What is the level of expertise of the person providing the information? Are they experts in their field or are they just offering opinions? Analyze the quality of the content. Is it professional and organized? Does it cite credible sources? Finally, look at the URL. Is it reliable? Does it end in .edu, .gov? Or .org. These URLs are dedicated to providing more factual information. And be wary of alternate URLs, often with a .co at the end, that are designed to deceive you. Digital fluency skills are skills we all need to learn and we all need to practice to keep ourselves and our loved ones safe and informed. When we incorporate these skills as a natural part of what we do when we use technology, we engage in that unconscious competence that allows us to fluently participate as knowledgeable members of the digital world. The challenges and the consequences have never been greater. We all must build and use these skills each day. Because if we work with fluency in the way we use technologies, we are able to keep ourselves safe online and take full advantage of the opportunities. Awareness is a key step in understanding, but practice makes perfect. Challenge yourselves and your students to hone these skills and build fluency by practicing with interactive digital literacy activities from sources like Common Sense Media, Google's Be Internet Awesome, BrainPop, or the News Literacy Project. Find these and other resources on the Digital Citizenship page of the LRC South educational technology website at go.rowan.edu backslash LRC South EdTech. You can also find additional resources at the LRC South Lending Library at Rowan University. Thank you for joining us today. Please visit our LRC website at go.rowan.edu backslash LRC South to watch additional modules or to browse our online and library resources.